Now, I do, I do want to look at one of the ways that Limerick out Fox Tipperary, and we'll go to the tactics board here. There are no tactics in hurling, of course, but, you know, if, you, if, if you'll allow me for, <laughs> to digress for a minute, I think Nicky Quaid was hitting the puck out um, in such a way. So this is the, the Limerick, sorry, the Tipperary backs. So the Tipperary backs were kind of forced in there and there. So just imagine they're all American men. And I found that Nicky Quaid, wh when he was allowed to, he was pucking ball into these areas and the likes of Aaron Galan or Graham Mulcahy were going into those areas, maybe Seamus Flanagan at times. Either that, or you had the likes of Garod Hegarty going around there, they'd be able to link up, pop a point over, over the bar. Is that how you saw it? Yeah, it is how I saw it, and it's funny, like, when you're talking about puckouts, you're always told, obviously this is the situation the opposition team is trying to uh, create, but, like, you're always told that regardless, those guys stay there. If your man runs, defender. yeah, you you hold your ground because essentially that ball that ball is cut off just from a person being there. You cannot play that ball now because he has to get over this man. When they come in here, like they're getting dragged, they're getting all sucked in together, and it's just I'd say from Barry Heffernan's case, it's probably inexperienced. I've not played wing back in championship before, but you would be told to never allow that happen. That. It's, it's criminal to allow that happen. Well, we just have a couple of photos to show what the likes of... Paddy Maher at times was sweeping because Kyle Hayes would draw into midfield or whoever was playing uh, at centre forward. So we just have a picture here where Paddy Maher... Look at the amount of area he has to try and cover there. So Paddy Maher is circled in yellow there. And that because Limerick have moved out into the spaces, they've just left an ocean. How is Paddy Maher? He's one man. He can't... He's not Usain Bolt. He's not going to get there first for every ball. So if it's pinned into space... He's in awful trouble. And I'll just show you another one. Uh, it's a temporary sideline with just maybe 10 minutes to go. It's a level game. And uh, the image will come up here. Ronan Maher is about to take a sideline. Look at the huge amount of space. This is Tipperary in their own half taking a sideline. Where is he? Where is he taking it from? Shane? So, so th just between the forty-five and the sixty-five okay, at the okay. far side. The far side I, yeah. I know it's a, it's a bit difficult to see from here, like, but there's incredible. there's forty-five yeah. yards of free space in your own half. It's a three v three inside. So, if Ronan Maher takes that sideline. We know he can probably even put it over from there, but if he scuffs that, and the Limerick man cuts it out, look at the amount of space he has to deliver the ball into. Hit a bit of cornerback in there. Exactly, and you've played cornerback, so tell me what should be happening in front of him there. Well, look at it. You can't leave, first of all, you can't leave that space uh, wide open. I think your first job, growing up as, you know, as a hurler, if you're playing the halfback line, your first job was to block the ball going in. That was your first, that's a basic principle, mm. and that has to happen. And the halfbacks, you know, from that picture, look so far dragged up the pitch, they need to be holding back and bringing back a midfielder and letting the half forwards play deep, like most teams do nowadays. You know, Kilkenny being a case in point, uh, and that just means I suppose the likes of maybe James Barry has probably been on the, the wrong end of this because of the space being involved. Um, he's had to deal with, and I, I think that's that goes back to Tipperary's setup and their structure in defence. The half backs have to have to hold position, have to cover that space, and the midfielders and the half forwards. I think it's just a, a, a communication thing to be honest, Shane, mm -hmm. and uh, and they drop back a line. We have a quick video of Tommy Walsh and his thoughts on Tipperary's full-back line. So let's see what the, the bowl Tommy has to say. I would actually be putting Paddy Marr at full-back. I think that's where the confidence seems to be draining out of the team that, listen, if the ball goes in long to the full-back line, like they're already missing Mickey Cal, they're already missing Cottle Barrett. So I think uh, I, I was at the league final right behind the goal, in, in the new stand behind the goal uh, inside Nolan Park. And when things were, were, when Tipperary were in trouble in the last 10 minutes, to put Parag Maher back in full back. And if you can think of it, most of the ball goes into the full forward line, to the full forward. So if you have your best player in there, clearing ball, like go back to the Brain, uh, Brain Lohans, the, the Rocks, uh, Noel Hickeys, even last weekend, like I know they lost, but Dave McNerney was brilliant. Um, so if it was me, I'd be putting Parag Maher back full back. And would that role, say, if it were to be instigated this Sunday, hypothetically, would that be, as you say, a, a man clearing up kind of almost as a looser fullback? Or given the individual scoring threats that Cork have from the likes of Horgan, Lehan and Harnady, would it be a man marking job? No, I wouldn't. Parag Mara would not be putting on a man marking job because he's what I call a baller. He goes after the ball the whole time. He's not going to be following a man, keeping him out of the game. Um, like he's not a sticky man marker, so I'd be leave, leaving him full back that he just launches attack after attack after attack. When the ball comes in, high or low, he's brilliant. Like he's a great man to read the ball on. So I'd be more seeing him there if he concedes a few points, no problem. But um, like he was, I think it was two thousand and nine. I'd say it was his first year with Tipperary. Um, he played against those 
in probably league finals and, and all Ireland finals. He was a brilliant full back that that year. Um, so listen, you're you're Robin Peter play, to play Paul. JJ Delaney, the greatest defender that I've ever seen, was played full back for most of his career. Because if he had to be number seven, he would have been, if you can imagine, even better again. And um, I think Paddy Marr, while we'd, I'd love to see him there, number seven. That's his home because he can just, you know, read the game at best from there um, without having to, you know, when you're centre back or full back, you're constantly having to keep your eye on your man. So I would love to see him number seven if, if, if all things were right. But in this current situation, I think it might just give a bit of confidence back into this Tipperary team, which I think they're lacking is a bit of confidence. Yeah, I mean, to some degree, I can see Paddy Maher full-back working, but I think you're going to suffer with the same issue. A ball will be popped in front of him, and I think we have an image of Limerick forwards creating space here as well, and, and also we're going to move on to Cork as well, but like, it's going to be the same issue. Like, look at the space that the Cork forwards have, so, or sorry, Limerick forwards have. They all went in a bit of a spine formation, that accordion thing where you, you kind of come, peel into the middle and then out to the side once the ball is delivered. I don't think Paddy Maher full-back is going to change that. The problem is the yeah, tactics. I, I don't think it matters. We yeah, have you need the midfield. You need every line yeah. to peel back a small bit. And that will protect your defence. You need everybody, like imagine that's the same team. If everyone st starts a bit further up and you keep your full forward line in here, you've actually just got space to work with at this end rather than space at this end in your backs. We actually did it, um, my time with Dublin on, under Dalo, we just played with, on, on the defensive puck outs, we played with four half backs with Johnny McCaffrey dropping back and a, a corner forward went to wing forward. And it meant then that we had a four across the back line and it just meant that it could cut out any ball coming through and we could build an, an attack from there. And that was really simple. I think it was David Tracy coming out the whole time and it, it was so effectively just to, just to win back possession and it cuts out all that space. I don't, don't care how good of a corner back or a full back you are, you won't cover that space at this level. Yeah, it's more of a fundamental issue. So let's look at, uh, at how Cork are going to attack Tipperary. Uh, first of all, let's look at the Nash puckers because we spoke about Nicky Quaid's. So let's see what Anthony Nash is going to do as well. I think we've got an image there as well that's about to come up. He tends to like to hit grass with the puckouts when he can. Now he'll target a couple of the big guys too when he can. The likes of Harnady is brilliant in the air. But look at this. This is a puck out that's, um, it might have been the... That was the first half, it was actually, yeah. So he's hitting into space, like the, the movement is the same again. The half forwards are switching around, they're starting in the middle, they're moving out at times. And he's after pucking that into space and it's bouncing there for Bill Cooper to get on the ball. And that's what Tipperary kind of fell foul of last year against Cork. And it's going to be the same issue again this year. Do you see Tipperary adjusting for this game? They're going to find it hard to adjust within six days because... Really, I, I mean like, I know it's, it might sound simplistic that we're doing it right here, but... Tell the half-hour to come out, tell everyone else to drop 20 yards. It seems simple enough. It does. If you haven't been working on it, it's, it's a little more difficult and there's the sense of panic that they have to win this game as well. So trying something, not saying it's new, but something that they haven't maybe been doing this year is a bit of an issue. But just on Nash's puck outs as well, I remember playing against Cork when Don Logue was in the goals and it was gas. It's the same kind of thing is happening again. The second he went to puck the ball, the ball was going to land here. So he was just about to hit the ball here. This guy gets out of here and it's the same again, it's someone moving at pace, coming into that space. It's kind, kind of like what Cluxton is doing with the football almost. He's not hitting a man per se, he's hitting an area and they know from some signal or whatever he's making, they know what area it's going into and it's the man's job who is standing in that area to get as far out of there as he can and someone else moves into that area and that's kind of what they're doing now as well. But he has the added option as well where he seems to be able to hit the ball into the full forward line mm. as well. So like I think he hit, he hit one of the corner forwards on the 14 I think by a puck out, <laughs> didn't did, he? Yeah. We won't get into this weight of the ball debate again. <laughs> no, I'm but, not but, 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 but like um, that's, that's kind of, and obviously he can play short and he can ping ball to guys at midfield as well. So mm. like stopping him and stopping them building that platform is so important. 